Hello. Hi, Robert. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Good to see you. Hello. Good. Yeah, and you? Looking well? Uh, well, I'm not terribly well at the moment, but uh, no. Uh, no. nice to be here anyway. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Doug. Cool. That's all right. It's not a problem. I've noticed I haven't changed my name. I've still got my wife's name up there with me as well. Never mind. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you say you've not been so well lately then? No, no I haven't, no. no. It's, it's, it's not the dreaded COVID, is it? Oh, no, not not, not, not that at all, no. Yeah. No. No, so I picked up your message that you left at the uh, the Kingdom Hall. Yes. I, I guess from that you've got one of these brochures, or have you um, downloaded it from the web? Or um, I downloaded Enjoy Life Forever. It's here somewhere. Oh gosh, when I need it, I've lost it. That's typical of me. Yeah. Uh, I do have. Here it is. Enjoy Life Forever. Yeah. I downloaded it and then I wrote away for a paper copy, which I've got here. You can see. Oh, I see. Oh, brilliant. So okay. uh, I find paper copy is so much quicker than. All this yeah. uh, messing around on computers. Could I just ask a question, Doug? I th um, your Grey's congregation, is that right? Yeah, that, that Kingdom Hall, there's actually two congregations that share that Kingdom Hall. Yes. Uh, there's Grey's and Grey's Stifford. Um, I'm in the Stifford side of things. Oh, you're Grey Stifford, right. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's, which, which county is that? That's in Essex. Essex, uh, okay. Yeah, so we're basically um pretty much near the dartford tunnel yes i know right down lakeside that sort of i used area. i used to live well a bicycle ride away from the dartford tunnel oh did you yeah. yes you yeah. probably got there quicker than by car then didn't you i remember going through it on a bicycle oh wow well about 40 years ago i must have been mad we held up all yeah. the traffic there were several of us they were very angry at us i'm not surprised yeah um yeah that's quite a silly thing to do done lots yeah. of silly things <laughs> um yeah, well, I'm, well i'm i'm curious about your book i found it very interesting doug but um i've just got a lot of questions things i don't understand yeah yeah okay understand that yeah, yeah. all right if we go through one at a time then if that's possible um, yeah, of course. the end of chapter six is on page 28 right let me uh uh, just open my one. Lesson six. How did life begin? Yeah. Um, to sum it all up, because I agree with really most of what's said in this chapter. It's a very well written chapter. The summary is Jehovah created the universe and all life, and of course I would thoroughly agree with that. I'd be crazy not to. Okay. Agreed. Jehovah is the is the is the creator of all life. Yes. Um, the Bible says that Jehovah creates all alone and by myself. I found that in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. I remember this verse from when I used to attend church. I don't go anymore. Right. This was one I remember. Where it says Lord in my New King James Version, I'll read Jehovah. Okay. Th thus says Jehovah, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am Jehovah who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone who spreads abroad the earth by myself. So Jehovah is the creator and he creates all alone and by myself. Agreed? Okay, yeah. When we go to the New Testament, the Father creates through the Son. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 8, 6, after the start of that chapter, which talks about idols, and it ends up saying that an idol is nothing. And when it says there's lords many and gods many, it's talking about false gods, these idols. Yeah, yeah. The contrast from that is in verse 6. That this is Corinthians chapter 5, was it? No, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Chapter 8. Uh, yeah. Yet for us there is only one God the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Uh, I'm not a, a Greek expert or scholar by any stretch of the imagination i'm just an ordinary person as you can see uh, um yeah. nothing special but the preposition of is ek it's out of sorry i've got a um a workman here could you just give me okay. a few minutes yeah no problem sorry. no problem sorry yeah hello oh, yes, it's, it's beautiful, can i Hello. 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 
Yeah, but, um, yeah, I'll just... I'll just have a message. I'll just have a cup of tea if you want to come. I'll let you talk, mate. I've got to do this, I've got another job on me. All right, I'm speaking on the phone to someone, so carry on. Thank you, cheers. Sorry about that. That's all right, it's no problem. Um, yeah, someone's coming to fix the patio. Um, right, um, so at 1 Corinthians 8, 6, creation is ek, out of the Father, of is ek in Greek, which means out of, and it's die, dear in the genitive sense, it's through the son. Okay. So yeah. father and son are both active in creation. A parallel to that is Hebrews 1, 2, where the father creates again through the son. We know it's a reference to the father because we find the words his son mentioned in verse 2. That would mean that God is father in verse 1. So it says, God, who at various times and in different ways, Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, Hebrews 1.2, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So if the Father made the worlds through the Son, then Jehovah must be Father and Son, not just the Father alone, because the Father and the Son together are the Creator. Right, I understand where you're coming from on that, yeah, and uh, I understand where, uh, where on the surface it, it can appear somewhat confusing. Um, it's interesting because when you look at the, in the Genesis account, in Genesis chapter 1, it makes the comment after the bulk of the creation work had been done, gets to the point where we're now going to create man. Genesis 1, I think it's verse 26. Um, yeah, verse 26, it says, Then God says, Let us make man in our image. So God is then talking to someone. Now, that someone would be his son, who in his pre-human existence was known as the word or logos, are uh, you familiar with that phrase? Well, I I would I I would say that in uh, I would say that in Genesis one twenty six that us there refers to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't wish to right. complicate it, but the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are Creator. I'm focusing okay. on Father and Son. Uh, Job thirty three four and Genesis one two talk about the Holy Spirit creating. Uh, the word for make is bara, which I believe is a singular. God there is Elohim, a plural, so it's a reference to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but the verb bara is, is make in the singular, so that it is God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who, who is the creator of mankind. Again, that would surely prove that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are Jehovah. Right, so, so boiling this down to, to, I think, really where you're coming from, let me just make sure I'm understanding yeah. the question right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, are you... I take it you're, you're, you're coming across to saying that you believe in the Trinity, that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are all one, three entities into one. Am I correct in that understanding? I don't believe the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are three entities into one, no. That's not the doctrine the Trinity is defined in the creeds. But yes, okay. I would be a Trinitarian as described in the creeds. Okay, okay, okay. So that kind of really is, with the, is it fair to say that's the crux of your question? The, no, the crux of my question is that Jehovah creates all alone and by myself in Isaiah forty four twenty four. Right. Yet in the Bible, the Father and the Son create, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Hebrews 1, 2. Yeah. The Son is the creator, John 1, 3. And, okay. and um, the Holy Spirit is the creator, Job 33, 4, Genesis 1, 2. So therefore, the one God of the Bible, Jehovah, must be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so it, it appears like there could be, you could say that there is a, almost like a contradiction. If, in terms, if you like, yeah. Uh, how? Uh, well, what you're saying is that unless you believe all three are one, they would appear to contradict each other. One what? Uh, so, you're saying the scripture in Isaiah that says that 
Jehovah is the one creator. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The other scriptures also refer to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, their involvement in the creation process. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and that's really is, is really getting to the point where um, the understanding of the involvement of the Son and the Holy Spirit in the creation process. Okay. Um, let me have a look. And okay. Have a look at Colossians chapter one. That's that's chapter fifteen. Colossians one fifteen is mentioned in chapter fifteen of your book. It mentions. Okay. It, it goes into who is Jesus, and I'm quite happy to do that, but we need to spend an hour or two hours on that if you want to go through it. It mentions Colossians 1.15, John 3.16, Proverbs 8.30. I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's relevant yeah. Yeah. to my question um, as the, to who is the creator. Okay, well, just obviously, yeah, we can spend a long time. I could just mention First Christian, uh, sorry, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Um, the preceding verses make it clear that it's referring to the Son, um, verse 14, by means of whom we have our release by ransom. So, c could I just ask, are we abandoning chapter 6? We're ignoring chapter 6, we're now moving on to chapter 15. Not at all. No. Okay. No. No. okay. No. It's just addressing that question on... Uh, the identity or the relationship between the Father and the Son. That wasn't my question. Chapter 6 says that Jehovah created the universe. Yeah. Isaiah 44, 24 says that Jehovah is the creator all alone and by myself. Now, right. It's expressly taught in the New Testament that the Father creates through the Son. 1 Corinthians yeah. 8, 6 and Hebrews 1, 2. The Holy yeah. Spirit's also the creator, Job 33, 4, Genesis 1, 2. And there are other passages. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 talk about the Son as the creator. Uh, John 1, 3 talks about the Son as the creator. So all I'm trying to say is, wouldn't that mean that as Father, Son and Holy Spirit are the creator, wouldn't that mean that Father, Son and Holy Spirit are Jehovah? That's that's the point I'm trying to make, Doug. Right. Okay. Am I right or wrong about that? The, the, the straight answer to it is no. They are three. They are not the same. They are three distinct. They are. I, 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 I agree. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not the same one person. That's modalism. I'm not a modalist. I'm a trinitarian. <coughs> yeah. So, going back to the point I was going to make was that um, in okay. Colossians chapter one. It refers to the Son, Jesus, as the firstborn of all creation. In other words, he had a beginning. He was created. Yeah? Uh, no. no, 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 no. That's actually verse 15, Colossians 1, 15, not verse 14. Yeah. I believe your I Bible right, says 15. he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That's correct, yeah. That's yeah. how the New World Translation reads. If you That's believe right. that firstborn, which is prototokos in the Greek, means the first created, then Jesus would be the first created of creation. It would be creation that had a birth canal, right? Females have birth canals, yeah. and babies come out of birth canals. So do you believe that firstborn means the first one to come out of a birth canal? Um, in human terms, yes. But in, when we're talking about spirit creatures, obviously... Uh, that's not the case, you know. I mean, there's no indication in the scriptures that that, that say that spirit creatures are, um, or, or the pro the procreation that we're used to in the physical earth with with humans and with other creatures. That does not happen in the spirit world. So, firstborn does not mean firstborn, according to you. Not it, not as we understand it. Firstborn will be the firstborn of all creation. In other words, he's the first creature. That was ever created. Right. Uh, the word for first created is protokiskos. Protokiskos is never used of Christ anywhere in the Bible. Firstborn is prototokos. So your Bible says the firstborn of all creation. Wouldn't that mean that according to your Bible it was creation that birthed Jesus? Well, 
it's interesting. The King James Version uses the same word. No, it doesn't. It says, well, it, I, no, it says I'm, the, I'm looking at the new, the new King James, which says the firstborn right. over all creation. How does the King so, James read? The King James Version I'm looking at, uh, verse 15 says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Right. Firstborn means preeminent. It refers right. to position, to rank. It doesn't mean the first to come out of a female's birth canal. Well, that's up for the discussion. The firstborn, that indicates... Well, does that. it mean that? Does, does firstborn prototokos mean the first to come out of a, birth, a woman's birth canal? Yes or no? If, if we're liking it to human terms, but then every creature on this earth, not every creature is born in that way, are they? Um, there are different creatures that reproduce in that way. But that would indicate, all, all that's indicating, using that expression, if you like, it's putting something that's happened in the spirit realm into language that we as humans can understand. Quite often that happens in the Bible. So are you saying it doesn't mean first to come out of a birth canal? What I'm saying is that it means that he was the first of Jehovah God's created No, it world. doesn't. That's protokiskos. This word, well, firstborn, is prototokos, a different Greek word. Yeah. I'm not a Greek scholar. Well, I'm not a Greek scholar either, but with the limited knowledge I've got, firstborn is prototokos, first created is protokiskos. If Paul wished to say that Christ was Jehovah's first creation, he would have said protokiskos. He uses firstborn prototokos. Prototokos is, is used throughout the Bible. Um, it, it's used in the Septuagint translation of the Hebrew Bible on numerous occasions. Let me give you s some examples. Um, Manasseh and Ephraim were twins, yes? Yes. Manasseh was born first. He came out of the birth canal first. Uh, Manasseh, I don't think Manasseh and Ephraim were twins, were they? You're talking about the two sons of Joseph. It doesn't matter. Carry on. Yeah. Manasseh... I think you're thinking of Jacob and Esau, aren't you? I'm Which talking mean? about Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh okay. came out of the birth canal first. He's called firstborn son. Perhaps I am getting a bit mixed up. Genesis 41, 51. Let's actually go there and read it. <clears throat> Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for yeah. God has made me forget all my toil in my father's house. And then his twin brother came out in verse 52 and the name of the second he called Ephraim for God has caused, caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So mm -hmm. Manasseh is the firstborn, yeah? Yeah, agree. Firstborn is prototokos. Okay. Okay. If you go to Jeremiah 31 9 it says Ephraim was Joseph's firstborn, not Manasseh. Do you want to read it? Jeremiah, what was that verse? 31 9. Nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Now right. you have twin brothers. Manasseh popped out of the birth canal first. He's referred to as firstborn in Genesis forty-one fifty-one, but in Jeremiah thirty-one nine, his twin brother Ephraim is firstborn. They couldn't have popped out of the womb at the same time, especially as it says clearly in Genesis forty-one fifty-two, the next verse, that Ephraim popped out of the birth canal second. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How do you reconcile that? Right. Well, the way to reconcile that is that at the time that Jeremiah gave his prophecy uh, the tribe of Ephraim was the most prominent of the ten tribe kingdom of Israel you just remember this was after mm -hmm. the, the, the the split of the nation um, and hence although the firstborn in terms of the, the baby the, the son that was actually born first was Manasseh Ephraim actually had the firstborn's rights exactly Exactly. Yep. So the word prototokos here refers to preeminent, the right of primogenitor, that the, the tribe of Ephraim became um, dominant over, the, over, over Manasseh. Ephraim yep. became dominant over Manasseh because Manasseh lost the birthright due to sin. Yeah, yeah, for, for whatever reason, yeah. So it's but got it nothing to do with being created or popping out of a birth canal, first of all. It's to do with rank, position, status. 
and and we're getting completely away from chapter six the the creation we, we what we're doing is we're doing part of chapter 15 in a sort of bitty incomplete way which i don't like i'd prefer to do the whole of the chapter anyway let, let me give you another example uh, david is the youngest son of jesse in 1 samuel chapter 17 yeah. verse 14 yeah but david is said to be firstborn in psalm 89 27 because the messiah comes through the line of david that's right, yeah. So firstborn doesn't mean the first to come out of a birth canal. In that instance, it refers to rank, position, status. Okay. So those two examples prove that when Jesus Christ is called firstborn at Colossians 1.15, it's not saying Christ is created. If Paul had wished to say Christ was created, he would have used a different Greek word, protokiskos. Firstborn means he is preeminent. He is the ruler over creation because in the next two verses, Christ is the creator. And let me prove that. The word other is not in the Greek text. So if you go to the kingdom into linear translation, the insertion of the word other in the New World translation is not accurate. The Greek doesn't have other. So Colossians 1.16, for by him, that's Christ, the son of verse 13, all things were created that are in heavens and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Now listen to this. We're going to find firstborn again. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn, prototokos, from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence. Firstborn from the dead. That doesn't mean he came out of a woman's birth canal after his death a second time. Exactly, exactly it right. It means yeah, preeminent. The and the word preeminent right. is used here linked to firstborn to show that prototokos, firstborn, simply means Christ is preeminent. He's preeminent over the creation because he's the creator, basically. That's what Colossians 1.15 is saying. But we've drifted. If... If chapter 6 says that Jehovah is the creator, wouldn't that mean that the creator is Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Because Father, Son and Holy Spirit are the creator, Doug. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, I understand what you're saying, yeah. You can get back to me if you want. Yeah, sure, I will be. Because, like I say, in terms of the Greek, Greek words, etc. Yeah. Uh, I'm a total novice. I know less than you in terms of the original Greek. Um, the other aspect to look at this is um, the, 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 the question with the Holy Spirit, whether the question of the Holy Spirit uh, has a personality. Um, elsewhere in the scriptures, it would indicate the answer is no, that the Holy Spirit is actually just God's active force that he uses to achieve whatever he wishes to achieve. So this is chapter seven. Going back to the beginning, this would be. This uh, is this is chapter seven of your book. What is Jehovah? Exactly. Like? Yeah. Is that chapter seven? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So th these are kind of questions that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. God's active force. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So it explains it there. Uses the scriptures uh, for for our understanding of what that Holy Spirit is. 